Hello everyone, it's Chris from Military Aviation History and as you know, drones and especially weaponized drones are becoming more and more of a thing. The US has been flying them for a long time and weaponized drones continue to proliferate in nations small and large and only recently in the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, drones and the way they were used made quite a few headlines. And as the US, Britain, France, Turkey, Israel, China and all the other large and also small players out there are starting to weaponize drones, you might not have realized that there is one country out there that has thus far refused to do so and is locked in a vigorous debate about whether to do this. And that country, well, it's mine, Germany. Germany has been locked in a debate for at least half a decade about whether to weaponize its drones or not and this is actually quite a big issue in Germany and in the political landscape there. The question is just why is this such an issue? And to answer that question, I have invited Dr. Ulrike Franke from the European Council on Foreign Relations. She is an expert on German defense policy and on drones. For example, she has recently published in the Handbook of Defense Studies and with a chapter on military robots and drones. And she is also the co-host of Sicherheitshalber, a German podcast dedicated to German defense policy. She has to follow this debate very closely. And if there's anyone that I can explain to both you and me what is going on, well, it's her. So yeah, Dr. Franke, thanks very much for joining me today. Could you give some background information maybe for the international audience that doesn't really know what's going on with the drone debate in Germany? <laughs> Well, the drone debate in Germany um, has been going on for quite a long time. So there's a bit of a question like how long you want to trace it back because Germany actually had drones since the 1980s and even had plans for armed drones in the 1980s. But I think the, the current drone debate basically started in 2012 mm -hmm. uh, when the then defense minister Thomas de Maizière proposed that Germany should get armed drones. Um, at this point, Germany, the German Bundeswehr had been in Afghanistan for, well, 11 years. It had used a number, I think five different systems of unarmed drones, primarily used by the army. So we're talking smaller drone systems, but also one Air Force system. And the Bundeswehr basically said, you know, it would be good if some of these systems were armed, it would really help us in our, our operation. And so since 2012, Germany has been debating whether or not we should be getting armed drones. And this really has become a big debate, which is a bit unusual become, because Germany doesn't really have a kind of tradition of, of discussions on security and defense questions, certainly not procurement questions. Mm -hmm. but, but I think drones kind of captured the public uh, imagination and, and the political to some extent. And so, yeah, for, for the last nine years or so, we've had a discussion whether the Bundeswehr should get armed drones or not. Um, and the procure procurement still hasn't happened. So there are plans to procure an Israeli system by now. I think we're going to get the this, this system, but but now the question is, will it be armed or not? So maybe they're just going to get it as an, as an unarmed version. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to have elections in September, so it may not be decided by this coalition anyway, so it may go into the next coalition again. Um, and it's really quite surprising given that basically during the same time, I don't know how many countries, maybe 10, maybe a dozen actually procured armed drones, including European partners. If we talk about the drone specifically that is at the center of the debate, um, the Heron TP by the Israel uh, Aerospace Industries. This drone, of course, can be weaponized. It has already been weaponized by other countries. How is the Bundeswehr currently thinking about the using system? Because they are leasing it, they are renting it. I mean, there is this whole system, uh, I'm sure you can explain it better than me, that's called rent a drone, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where you actually don't own the drone that you're flying. How, how does that work with the Bundeswehr? The Bundeswehr has several drone systems, again, all unarmed for the moment. Most of them they actually own. So these are the army systems. They've you know, bought them, procured them as other military systems. Mm -hmm. But the Luftwaffe currently flies the predecessor of the Heron TP that you just mentioned, which is the Heron 1, a bit of a smaller system, surveillance drone. And the Bundeswehr, the Luftwaffe really, has been flying this for a few years now. And indeed, they are leasing that from the Israelis. And specifically, they aren't even leasing the drones, they are leasing the drone hours. Mm -hmm. So the contract basically says, you know, you get 500 hours of surveillance per month. And then it's, it's up to the company to provide 
as many or as few systems as, as are needed. And so in Afghanistan and, and now in Mali, Germany had three here on ones that it was using. And so now we discuss this procurement or yeah, this leasing of Heron TP, the, the successor system or kind of the bigger system in this Heron family, mm-hmm. uh, which can indeed be armed. It doesn't have to, of course, you don't have to put arms on it, but that's kind of the idea. And this would also be leased. And what's sort of the, the roadmap then? The idea is that the Bundeswehr um, gets these systems, I mean, in a way, as soon as possible. Funnily enough, the Heron TP isn't even supposed to be, you know, Germany's main armed drone. This is supposed to be an interim system Mm -hmm. that kind of covers the gap until Germany, together with other Europeans, gets the Euro drone. The Euro drone is a common European project that's being developed jointly by several European partners. And Germany is one of the the customers for this. They basically wanted to rent the Heron TP in in order to to cover the the gap, have this interim system until the Eurodrone uh, comes into play. Now, the Eurodrone is delayed as well, so so there you go. But but this is the, the thinking. How would the Bundeswehr use it? The main reason, the primary reason that the Bundeswehr has really repeated since the beginning, they, they've been very consistent in their, in their argument. They basically said, we would like to have an armed surveillance drone, because it's always important to remember that an armed drone is also a surveillance drone. Like They, they carry all the relevant surveillance um, systems, but we want an armed surveillance drone to help our troops on the ground, Mm -hmm. to provide what is called armed overwatch. They sent out drones to, you know, look at the the route they were taking, looking whether there were any issues, stuff from really banal things like traffic jams to, you know, more specifically military things like um, dangerous areas or, you know, potential danger zones. So the drone went, goes out before the troops. Towards the end of the Afghanistan mission, no German troops would go out of camp without being followed or surveilled, monitored by drones. And if these drones were armed, the big advantage this would give the troops is that if something happens, if they're being attacked, then they have immediate air support with them immediate air support, flexible air support. They don't have to wait for anything. They don't have to ask allies to provide air support. Air support. Um, it's also rather precise and also rather small um, missiles that we're mm-hmm. talking about. And and yeah, so I think this, this um, help of the troop on the ground, armed overwatch is really the number one priority for the Bundeswehr when it comes to armed drones. And the main argument that they are making why they want armed drones. Most people are probably going to see those arguments and say those make sense. If Germany sends the Bundeswehr or their soldiers to a place where they are potentially exposed to danger, then obviously we should do everything to protect the soldiers. How come that this debate is happening in Germany in a way that I think in most countries there wouldn't even be a debate on this? I would say that there are kind of three main reasons why this has become such an issue for Germany. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one is that from the very beginning, drones, armed drones, were associated in the German discussion with the way that the Americans used their armed drones, namely for targeted killings outside of official battle spaces. We're talking predominantly Pakistan, the tribal areas of Pakistan, Mm -hmm. but also Yemen and Somalia, flow not even necessarily by the Air Force, but by or under the the guidance and leadership of the CIA. So, And of course, these operations, these targeted killings um, are extremely controversial, not just in Germany, but really everywhere. There is a big debate going on on whether they are illegal, and a lot of legal scholars say that they are illegal. So there's a good reason to kind of discuss this. Mm-hmm. But in the German discussion and in the German mindset, these, these two issues, you know, armed drones and the specific policy of using armed drones in the way that the Americans did, was very much linked. And a lot of Germans basically said, we don't want to use drones that way, therefore we shouldn't get drones, which isn't, isn't it, it's not automatic, right, that mm-hmm. you get armed drones and use them for targeted killings outside of official battle spaces, but that was the, the link. So that's number one. Number two, a bit more recently, drones, also in the mind of a lot of people, are very much linked to autonomy and killer robots. You even have, you know, SPD politicians that basically say, so social democrats in Germany who have been opposing this, 
who basically say we don't want to get armed drones because we are against the automization and the autonomy in warfare, which just doesn't really hold up because you can easily be against autonomous weapons in warfare and still get these remotely piloted drone systems, right? The Heron TP has, has a crew of three that flies them, but this also is linked. There's this idea of you know, drones being killer robots. And then third, Germany doesn't really have a, a tradition of discussing security and defense topics mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons. And I think what happened is because this was a big topic that somehow got discussed, a lot of different themes got kind of involved in this discussion. And I, I experienced this myself quite often when I was talking about drones and what they're good for and what they're not good for and what the dangers are and all of that. In the end, a lot of the public debates really devolved into a discussion of what did we even need the Bundeswehr for and why are we in Afghanistan anyway and, and something like that, which kind of happens if you don't have these discussion in any other context. Yeah. And so... You know, rather than discussing something in particular, we discussed all security and defense questions, which which doesn't quite quite work. You, you already mentioned Eurodrone. I think um, there's also a NATO NATO system where Germany is uh, integrated into. I only know the name Alliance Ground Surveillance System. Is that? that yeah, that's, that's also the, Germany. Um, that's part that's of the it. That's the Global Hawk, which is an unarmed drone, though. That's mm -hmm. a surveillance system that. That has been bought by NATO, which is quite rare because NATO doesn't really have its own capabilities. It's normally the member states. And yes, indeed, NATO has bought five of these uh, Global Hawk plane, which, by the way, is the biggest military uh, drone in operation. Mm -hmm. It's a so-called hail drone, high altitude, long endurance. It's a pretty big, big system. That's a surveillance drone that NATO has bought and is operating. And yes, Germany has, has bought into that. It looked like at the end of 2020, like things were going in the right direction, right? In, in May, we had this, the, the dawn in the butter, where this, I think it was six hours long streamed online, where people that were criticizing the, uh, the acquisition or the, the implementation of weapons on the Heron TT, TP could say or voice their opinions. And then also the uh, befürworter, the, uh, the pro side. Then there was another, uh, I think, debate in the uh, defense committee of the parliament in October. And things looked like they were going towards a resolution of the issue. And then suddenly in December, the, the SPD pulls out and says, we hadn't had a deep enough debate. I mean, at this point, you know, why, how, what, how is this possible? We have now entered election year in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. We have parliamentary the, um, elections in September. Um, and indeed there was this hope by those who want to procure the system that this procurement decision could be taken, could be taken in 2020. So it's basically the uh, a Bundestag committee, a parliamentary committee who needs to take the final decision um, on that. The German MOD made this clear effort in 2020 to say, okay, we agree to have a big debate on this. And there were, as you were saying, a number of different formats of discussion where everyone could talk about it. And yeah, the MOD was hoping that at the end of this would be this decision, this political decision to prefer the system. And indeed, once again, and I get to this in a second, the SPD, the Social Democrats, the coalition partner said, this is all nice and well, but there hasn't been enough debate, uh, still not. And so we can't take this decision. And this was, to be honest, extremely frustrating for pretty much everyone involved, especially because this had already happened before. Four years ago, we actually had the same governing coalition, uh, CDU, CSU and SPD. We had a very similar situation where there was a debate about drones. A, de a decision was supposed to be taken by the, the Bundestag committee and just a few months, I think, before the parliamentary election, SPD said, ah, oh, we can't decide this right now, there needs to be more debate, and they basically left it until the election. And to be honest, I'm pretty certain that their thinking was, we're probably not going to be in government again, we don't decide this now, this is going to be next coalition's problem. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, next coalition was the old coalition, they were in the coalition again, they had the problem again. It's not even as if the SPD is actually saying we don't want to prefer armed drones. They are saying there hasn't been enough debate. And this gets really frustrating because by now the question really is, will there ever be enough debate? Like, well, how do you even define this? Because I am 100% for debate on security and defense topics. I think this is absolutely fundamental. We need to do this more in Germany. However, I, I'm not kidding when I'm saying in the German drone debate, Everything has been said and by everyone. 
there really are only so many points one can make. And I can't see how they, how they can't take a decision on the basis of the current current data. Basically, there are two camps, two sides in the SPD, right? There are those also that want drones to be weaponized and those that don't. How much is this issue then more of a, a, a question about ideology, perhaps, or how the, these parties or these, these members in the parties have a problem with how the Bundeswehr is being employed at the moment, rather than actually being about the drones specifically? I mean, it's a bit difficult to say. You're right to point out that it's not as if the SPD was actually clearly against drones. Again, this would almost be easier. There are some, some parties in the German parliament that are just against it, and then you know you would just decide to not procure it. There has indeed even been a, a kind of rift created by this in the party with the spokesperson for defense questions stepping down um, in parliament uh, because of the drone question, over the drone question, which honestly, you know, if you think about this, I've studied this for a long time and I, you know, I think it's really important, but it's not such an enormous issue for German political, as German military politics that, that we should have such a debate on this. I mean, I think there are bigger questions in terms of you know, nuclear sharing and the kind of really big picture questions. Um, it's really interesting that it was the drone debate that's, that's causing um, uh, this. This is also a party which, as many social democrats in, in Europe, um, they are losing votes and they're losing voters and they're kind of trying to figure out on which issues they should position themselves and how they should position themselves. And I think to some extent, some of the party are trying to appeal to some of the kind of more pacifist um, groups within the German, the German population. Uh, I mean, you even had voices from the SPD that were basically questioning NATO. And so it's kind of, you know, really, really quite surprising. In Germany, we haven't found a consensus yet of what we want the Bundeswehr to be. Like there is no vision of this force. Is, is that correct to say? Yes, to some extent it has to do with the vision and the ideas for the Bundeswehr. But it also in a way has to do with trust. Trust in other political partners and trust in the Bundeswehr as well. Because this is the interesting thing, right? SPD and others, they aren't questioning that armed drones can help to provide security for soldiers, right? And if they aren't questioning that, one would think, well, why don't you procure it then? And the reason is that they worry that the moment you get these systems, the moment you, you have them in your arsenal, you're going to go and do things with it that weren't really discussed. And so this is why I'm talking about trust, because to some extent, it's this thinking that if we buy these systems and then, you know, another coalition comes into power, they may, may want to use these in conflicts that we don't like. And similarly with the, with the Bundeswehr, because honestly, you know, if you train your drone pilots well, if you have clear rules of engagement, there's very little reason to believe that, that soldiers would use drones in kind of illegal or inhuman or any kind of other problematic ways. But if you don't really trust the soldiers, and if, then you may not want to give them certain weapons with which they may be able to do things that you don't like. So, so I think that's, that's the point. It's, it's a little bit what should the Bundeswehr be doing anyway and what kind of wars we're doing and a little bit the drone itself. But I think it, it, to some extent it comes down to trust in, in other political decision makers and trust in the military. You, you said earlier uh, everything that has or that could have been said has been said about this debate. Is there anything you still think that is missing? But is there something forgotten in the debate about weaponizing the drones that you think is more important and should be discussed more openly? Not necessarily that some things need to be discussed more. I mean, I guess it's worth actually discussing this trust um, point, but I think there are still a few elements which are worth keeping an eye on and on which more research may be warranted. And one in particular is the psychological impact that drone operations have on drone operators. There are a lot of ideas about the impact that drone operations could have, and there is a lot of anecdotal evidence from drone operators. And it basically goes, goes two different ways, right? It goes, some argue, including some drone operators, argue that drone armed drone operators become cubicle warriors, they uh, 
they they feel that uh, killing people becomes you know like playing a computer game you video game you don't you don't really realize what you're doing so that's kind of one camp and the other repercussion or consequence that's being discussed is that in fact because drone operators are so linked to what's happening on the ground they have you know great surveillance and videos and all of that um, they follow a target potentially for a long time. They remain in place, if you like, once a strike has been has happened. They, in fact, become psychologically extremely involved and therefore have higher rates of PTSD. And the interesting thing is that we have, you know, anecdotal evidence for both. Both may be true depending on the context. But what I'm saying is I think we need a bit more research into what exactly is happening and also which factors are influencing this and what can mitigate this. Because a lot of the research on this that we currently have is coming from the US because, you know, they have the most extensive drone operations and most drone pilots. Um, and they indeed had, you know, instances of burnout and psychological problems with drone operators. But some of the evidence points a bit to the fact that these drone operators also were massively overworked. They, you know, never had any uh, holidays. They, they were deployed in, in uh, near Las Vegas, commuted to work weren't being deployed to the, the area of operation, really kind of felt like they were extremely far away from the operation. So there were kind of specific factors that may not be present in the German case, or indeed, you can avoid them. Like, this is the thing, right? I want this research in order to say, this works, this doesn't, this has this negative implication, this doesn't. And so keeping an eye on that, um, I think would be really important. There's more research needed. We don't really have all the, all the answers yet. But yeah, that's that's worth looking into. How about for for the German debate also to think about how we actually defend ourselves against the system? Is there anything going on there? Because if we don't arm our own drones, I assume that perhaps there is no real debate or research going on on how we def develop a capability to defend ourselves against drones. No, I think there is. Um, I think there is uh, because one is necessarily related to the mm -hmm. other, I think. Um, and also because one is a bit more a military discussion, less than a public one. Yeah. Um, so within the, the Bundeswehr, within the German MOD, there's definitely a, a discussion and research going on on how to defend ourselves against drones. The big challenge here, of course, being that there are, very, there are different types of drones uh, that can attack you in very different contexts. So that makes it difficult. But they're looking into this, and I think the recent conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh has actually fueled this quite a bit. So, you know, as, as, as your audience will know, in Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, we saw in this conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, the use of different drone systems, including so-called suicide drones, kamikaze drones, loitering munition. And this conflict, I mean, A, showed how militarily useful armed drones can be. But it also showed that you really need a good defense against armed drones, otherwise you have a problem. And so the German defense minister, Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer, has been quite outspoken on saying, OK, we need to look into this. And I mean, luckily, the two aren't really related, right? You can say we don't want armed drones, but we definitely need defense against drones. But anti-drone systems, counter-drone systems, really is an enormous growth area and something that a lot of militaries all over the world are looking into. And it's not that easy. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to find something that works everywhere and in every context and against every drone and, and cost effect efficiently. So. so so, as a last point, I mean, I'm sure you piqued the interest of a lot of people. Do you have any sort of recommendations on where people could turn in to, towards to if they want to know about drones in general or even about the German uh, debate? I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good literature on all of that. I actually, for those really interested, I, I once put together a few years ago, a bibliography for Oxford University Press bibliography. So there's a whole list of, of books and articles I recommend on different dro drone themes. On drones more generally, a book I really liked is an edited volume edited by Bradley Strasser. It's called Killing by Remote Control, which I think is really quite good at, at, at outlining some very important points. Chris Wood's Sudden Justice is also very good. This is more of a, I mean, he's a journalist, but you know, he's, he's with, he was with the Bureau of Investigative Journalism before he's with Air Wars now, so massively specialized um, on these topics. And he wrote especially about, you know, Afghanistan and, and, and Pakistan and, and these operations that the US was, was doing. And on the German drone debate, I mean, to be honest, I've written a lot on this. Um, so both in English and in German. Um, 
so so yeah, if, if you search my name in the drone debate, I think a lot of things are going to pop up that kind of summarize uh, all of the, the points. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be linking those recommendations from you and also uh, you know, your list of publications in the description as well for people to check out. Um, they would definitely be interested. Uh, Dr. Funke, thank you very much for, for answering the questions. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope that the uh, topic of drones in Germany resolutes, uh, resolves itself soon. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was my, my pleasure. And yeah, I'll be following this. So maybe at one point we're going to have a, a solution one way or the other. So I hope that you enjoyed this interview and if you have any thoughts about this issue, the debate that Germany is having about whether to weaponize its drones or not, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'd be very interested and I'm very curious in fact to see what both my German audience thinks about this and especially also my international audience because the way that Germany seems to handle this issue is very different, at least on the surface, to how procurement and these debates unfold in other countries. So if you have any takes on this, please leave them down below. I look forward to reading those. And if you enjoyed this video and the other videos on my channel, please consider supporting via channel memberships here on YouTube or via Patreon. Your contribution goes a long way in allowing me to make this sort of content. And I also want to thank once again Dr. Funke for answering my questions. You find more information about her and her work down in the description below. And also, if you are a German speaker, then I would highly encourage you to check out Sicherheitshalber, so the podcast that Dr. Funke is a co-host on. It's an excellent source and a podcast about German defense policy. In fact, it's so good that I also support him over Patreon. It's really excellent. So do check that out. The link will also be in the description below. So as always, I wish all of you a great day and see you in the sky.